Okay, the purpose of this video is to describe how I go about uh, blurring a back, the background in some of my wildlife uh, shots. Uh, here we have a nice little American wigeon hen, uh, which is uh, floating on some nice, uh, fairly calm water. Uh, but the one thing I would like to see on this is this background area here blurred uh, a little bit more than what it is and also a little bit in the foreground here as well. So here's what I, do, uh, I have done and um, oh, is to create, first of all, over here in the uh, layers uh, menu, I've created three different layers of the exact same Im image. One I call the original image in case I ever have to go back to uh, what I started with. Then one that I call the background and one that I call the duck. Uh, so the first um, uh, stage in this is to select just the, the duck uh, in this image, and uh, I'll show you how you do that. Uh, normally, I have found um, that uh, I can get a really a pretty good selection uh, on images like this by going up to the Select uh, menu option, and in this case, uh, merely select uh, the Focus Area option. And what the focus area option does is Lightroom is smart enough to look at this image and look at those items which are are um, uh, in focus and then select uh, do, do a pretty good job of selecting uh, those areas that are in focus. Now uh, it does a pretty good job of this but I want to do uh, a little bit of a modification uh, on, on this. And if you look, you can see the marching ants uh, around the duck here. But some of the areas which um, need to be uh, uh, deselected are not. Um, so let me zoom in just a little bit. And you can see that all of this area right in here um, needs to, um, uh, to be deselected. So over here in this focus area menu, there is an icon. Uh, which is Focus Area Subtract Tool. So I click on that, and um, uh, I get uh, the icon, the rather the, cur the cursor here, which allows me to deselect that uh, that area, which does a pretty good job on it. It's not perfect right in here, but we'll, um, we'll address that later. Um, the other area that needs to be deselected is this area here, so I uh, hover the cursor uh, over that, Click that, and uh, that gets deselected as well. Um, the other area that um, uh, I see is right up in here. That area needs to be selected rather than deselected. So I can press my Alt key on a Windows uh, machine. You can see that that um, uh, changes the, uh, the the cursor there from a minus to a plus, which means add to the selection. So I click there, and you can see that now that adds it, and we've got a pretty good selection uh, there. Um, and uh, normally what I do, I won't do it right now, is I go over the, um, uh, the edges on this and uh, see where uh, the selections are good and where they're not good. The only one, really one we need to work on a little bit is this area right in here, and we'll talk about that in just a second. So what I do is I output to, uh, make sure that this uh, focus area is output to selection here and uh, click OK. Um, so now we have output um, that uh, to uh, our selection. And um, the first thing that I normally do is I just go back up here to um, select and um, save selection. And um, I'm going to call this selection just duck. Uh, that allows me to go back, and if I if I want to start all over again, I can um, I can reselect uh, that area. So I click OK on, uh, on that. Now, um, the first thing that I want to do is create a layer mask uh, out of this selection. So what I do is I will go down here to the um, um, bottom of my uh, menu and it says um, uh, add layer layer mask and I click on that icon 
and uh, that creates a layer mask out of that uh, that particular selection. Uh, now, as you can see, this area right here didn't come out uh, terribly well. We're going to fix that here in just a second. So, what I want to do is to um, double click on that um, uh, masking area and um, go to the um, uh, mask modification area. Normally what I like to do is just over here in the edge selection is to add maybe about two pixels uh, to that and uh, that creates a little bit smoother um, uh, uh, edge uh, on, on the duck. Uh, the other thing I, um, I, I will do is now to fix this area right here I can fiddle that with that uh, for quite some time using um, this um, edge selection uh, tool, but in this particular case, uh, it's it's easier just to go down here and click this um, third icon down, which brushes on white onto that that layer. And because the blurred area back here is going to be virtually the same as the original, I'll just go ahead and uh, and uh, paint on some white uh, in there, which brings all that um, detail back. Uh, in the area of those um, uh, feathers right there. So um, we've done that, and I click OK, and we're back um, to, uh, to the original uh, here. Now, of course, the object of this is to, um, to blur the background. So um, what I want to do is um, select this background area here, and we can see that the background uh, is still uh, in the original condition. I'm going to deselect uh, the duck here. I'm going to go back and um, I'm going to go load the selection, which is the selection that uh, that I saved. And uh, as you remember, we uh, we saved that as uh, before as duck. So I click OK uh, on that, and now we have uh, selected this uh, area that has, was in focus. So what uh, what I want to do is um, I want to eliminate the entire duck from the background. And the reason I do that is because when we go into the blur, if we blur um, this area and don't uh, eliminate that duck, we will see haloing in the blur, which is what we absolutely don't want to see. So uh, the first thing in, in order to eliminate uh, this, this duck uh, is I'll have to modify that selection because I want I want uh, you'll see why in just a second. Uh, I want to expand uh, the selection so that I expand by, uh, you'll have to do a trial and error on this, uh, 20 pixels uh, here, which as you can see, now the marching ants are outside the area which um, uh, which I want to fill uh, to make, to, to eliminate the duck. So what I do uh, then is I go to edit and um, um, oops, I'm going, to, I'm going to select the area I want to uh, fill. So I go to edit and fill and uh, make sure that this is on contents aware and click OK. And uh, it, uh, Photoshop does its thing and as you can see the uh, the duck is uh, is now eliminated from the image. Uh, it's not a perfect fill here, but 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 that's really okay, because all we're interested really in is getting a good uh, fill around the edges of that selection. Um, so uh, now I'm going to go back and deselect that. I'm going to go and click uh, the original image, and you can still see we still have um, a nice uh, image of the duck uh, with some pretty good edges. Uh, on that, but uh, what we want to do is blur the background, and we're going to use the um, tilt shift blur effect on this because we want to get a gradual blur uh, from the area that is in focus back to the background and and in the foreground ground as well. So the way we do that is the first thing we want to do is go up here to the um, filter uh, menu item and. Uh, select convert for smart filters and we're doing this to this layer now what that does is that makes this layer a, um, a smart uh, filter a smart uh, layer 
and it will allow us to go back and make changes after the fact, uh, rather than, in other words, non-destructive uh, changes on this layer, which is uh, which is probably what we want to do. So, um, uh, what we're going to do is continue to operate on that layer. So we want to select it. So, I'm, but I'm still going to select this because I want to see how this blur uh, turns out uh, on the entire image. So we go down, and uh, the blur that we want to select is in the blur gallery and that is the tilt shift blur uh, so uh, the menu item pops up here and um, and uh, uh, shows us the uh, the tilt shift blur now as you can see there uh, are various um, uh, lines and properties and what have you like like that on this and that um, uh, shows us uh, how uh, how much blur uh, there is um, diam diam dynamically going back to the background from where it's in sharp focus and into the for foreground. Now, this uh, small icon here and this uh, line, uh, this small icon shows you the area that is should be in perfect focus, and we want that right down at the water line here. So I drag that down here, and um, I'm going to. Uh, go up here to the blur effect and I'm going to go to an extreme here and you can see that um, uh, what happens is, is that this uh, stays in focus and then gradually blurs back to the uh, to the background so I'm going to uh, take the magnitude of the blur uh, down here down to um, Oh, maybe about, uh, uh, let's see, about 80, 78 uh, pixels, uh, maybe a little bit more than that, maybe, uh, what is that, 88, and, and, and that looks pretty good. Um, now, actually, the uh, the amount, or the, grad, the graduation of the blur, if you will, uh, doesn't look too terribly bad there, but as you can see, we can adjust it by dragging uh, this line forward uh, to how much blur is affected back in the background. You can play with that in your image and um, and uh, that can be done to taste. Also there's blur in the foreground here um, uh, for front, front blur on that. So actually that uh, that doesn't look uh, too, bu too, too bad. The one other thing uh, that I do is notice uh, down here there is a grain amount. One of the things that can make this image look fake is um, is once you blur the image, you get rid of all noise. Uh, so um, if if you have all noise uh, uh, removed in the blur and some noise in the image, that can make that look rather fake. So usually what I do is I go down and I zoom in real close and I add a small amount of grain. As you can see, there is grain uh, now in this image, which makes it look a little more uh, realistic. Uh, so we've done that and uh, we will then click OK. And then um, we'll see this image and we'll see now that is a very nice blurred uh, image. Uh, and if we want to compare that uh, to the original, um, we'll uh, see there's the original, there's the blurred image, and um, uh, it looks, uh, looks very nice. So that's my procedure. Enjoy!